Hey everybody, Damon D here. And what I'm gonna do is go through the top 10 most influential left-handed guitar players. And I'm left-handed, so this is a great list. Let's do it. So at number 10, we have Elliot Easton from The Cars, who actually studied at the Berkeley College of Music, which is pretty cool. So he must know what he's doing as far as guitar goes. So yeah, he started the band The Cars in 1976. You know, they had really great hit single, Just What I Needed. Everybody's familiar with that. So if you combine the songwriting of Rick Okasik and Elliot Easton playing guitar, you know, it's a really powerful two guitar twin attack. And he was actually the youngest member of the band, which is an interesting factoid. Number nine, we have Cesar Rosas from Los Lobos, which a lot of people think of Los Lobos as, you know, La Bamba, 1987. That's kind of their big breakout from a national perspective. But what's cool about his playing is he can shred, play blues, kind of more like 50s style as well, and then rock stuff, but also has a really good sense of um, his heritage with, you know, Latin American, Mexican music. So there's a lot of uh, influences there with, you know, traditional Mexican folk and, you know, guitarra and things like that. So at number eight, we have Albert King, blues great extraordinaire, uh, really influential blues guitar player, um, best known for his album Born Under a Bad Sign and this title track, obviously. And I believe Cream played that song as well, covered it, I believe. Um, or Eric Clapton. I think it was Cream. Anyway. And he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2013. So that'll tell you that uh, probably a pretty good guitar player. So Albert King, B.B. King, and Freddie King, three of the greatest blues players of all time. I think most people would say that's true. They actually weren't related. So at number seven, we have Jimmy Cliff. We have to put somebody in the reggae world on the list. And I think Jimmy Cliff is really represents that really well. He's probably best known for his songs, Reggae Night and Hakuna Matata. Everybody knows what that is. And his covers of, you know, Cat Stevens' Wild World. Um, that's another one. And again, Another left-handed guitar player inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Jimmy Cliff, 2010. That says a lot right there. And if you think about kind of the ska, rock steady, reggae vibe, I think, you know, he was really influential on that scene and kind of exploded the music all over the world. So Jimmy Cliff. Okay, at number six, we have Tim Armstrong from Operation Ivy and Rancid. Um, one of the things to note about Tim is you know, kind of this really diverse playing, right? So punk rock, ska, kind of rock steady. You know, he was actually in a hip hop group as well. Um, he's written for, I think he won a Grammy writing for Pink of all people. So can kind of go between that world of, you know, underground with ska and punk and mainstream punk and then, you know, write for Pink, which is pretty much straight pop world, right? That's pretty great. And Armstrong also won a Grammy actually working with Jimmy Cliff, who was in this list as well. So that's amazing. Two left-handed guitar players just tearing it up. It's really great. And he also worked with Joe Walsh with, you know, everybody knows who that is, the Eagles and James Gang and all that. So uh, pretty accomplished. Okay, at number five, we have surf guitar aficionado Dick Dale. And one of the things I found out when I was doing some research here was he's one of the first people that worked, I believe, with Fender on a 100-watt amp. So... If you want to talk about influence, there wasn't going to be no power amps, these big, massive amps until he came along. So one of the things he also did was kind of had reverb and effects and played a very unique style that kind of influenced the Beach Boys and all that kind of, you know, early 60s surf stuff. So Dick Dale's on this list. Amazing. At number four, we have Kurt Cobain from Nirvana. And I think one of the reasons he's on this list is because from just this perspective of bridging the, the the underground, the punk scene, what was happening in Olympia, Washington, and the grunge, and just exploding to the to the the mainstream, and actually probably had a hand in you know the final nail in the coffin of the '80s um, hair metal scene, which depending on your perspective was good or not. Um, so really influential songwriter um, in a trio, three piece. So we had a lot to do with you know, 
uh, singing, playing guitar, songwriting, and just really exploded on the scene within a short pe- period of time. And, you know, within five or six years, just went from, you know, a guy in a flannel shirt in, you know, Washington <laughs> that nobody knew to exploding all over the world, which is pretty amazing. And it was a pretty good songwriter as well. At number three, we have Sir Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Uh, now, I know he he's primarily known as a bass player, but he actually did more guitar playing than people know. You know, he played guitar on Blackbird, which is one of their most famous tracks. So he played on that. Uh, Taxman, which is a really great track. Uh, Good Morning, Good Morning. Uh, the End. So while he is a bass player and plays piano and keyboard as well, he does play guitar. So it really would be hard to leave someone as influential just in general on music. Um, like Paul McCartney off the list, um, but he does play guitar, so we're putting him in. Okay, at number two, we have Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath. Now, it's pretty clear, any kind of heavy music, this is probably where it came from. You know, before Sabbath, you know, there was some heavy bands. I don't know, Hawkwind was, I'm not sure if they were before Sabbath, but this, you know, he takes it to a whole nother level with, you know, diminished fifths and distorted tones and drop tunings, which was kind of the start of all this heavy stuff that kind of flowed in the 70s and 80s and beyond. And even to now, you know, it's pretty clear that his influence is unparalleled. And if you're talking about heavy music, this is where it starts. And at number one, of course, the man on my wall, Mr. Jimi Hendrix. It's really tough to say anybody had as much influence on rock, especially rock, blues, heavy guitar um, than Jimi Hendrix. You know, the leads and the solos and the showmanship and lighting his guitar on fire and all that has is in there. But he's a really good songwriter, uh, singer, in, again, in a trio, which makes it really challenging to kind of fill up the sound. And he was obviously able to do that. Um, so it's and for me, being left handed, you know, Jimi Hendrix was when I was a kid it was like wow this is amazing I want to try to play some of his music um really influential and it's and again an artist who had a really short kind of uh time span um before he passed away I think at 27 but in that time span wow what a catalog okay so that's what we've got for the 10 most influential left-handed guitar players so I think the list is pretty solid now there could be some uh, cases to be made for other artists, you know, Courtney Barnett, she's kind of this, you know, up and coming guitar player. She's left-handed. Um, so maybe she's kind of on the edge of that list or might fit in there somewhere. But anyway, if you guys have any comments, put them in. Let's see. What do you guys think? And how many people watching this video are left-handed like myself? This is Damon D. One world, one rock.